Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 46 of the chapter Organic Chemistry, Some Basic Principles and Techniques. We were doing the quantitative analysis of elements present in organic compounds. And till now we have studied how do we analyze the quantity of uh, carbon, of hydrogen, of nitrogen and uh, of the halogens. In this video, I'm going to start talking about the estimation of sulfur. How do we find out the quantity of sulfur? Once we have determined that the compound has sulfur in it, how do we come to know what is the quantity of sulfur or how much of sulfur is present in the given quantity of the organic compound? From that, we will calculate the mass percentage of sulfur in the compound. It's the same as we have been doing for other elements. We first identify the element and then we want to know how much of the element. Once we know all the elements that are present in the compound, we would like to know the mass percentages of each element in the compound so that we can determine the empirical formula. So let us talk about sulfur. In the previous video, we talked about the estimation of halogens. And I told you that we use the carrier's method for the estimation of halogen. For the estimation of sulfur also, we use the carrier's method. And as you saw, the carrier's tube is a long tube. It is about 50 centimeters long and it is about 2 centimeters wide. And we have a little tube in it. And that tube is more like the ignition tube that we use uh, for sodium. Similarly, a similar kind of an ignition tube, we use that and we put the compound in it. And we heat it up in the carrier's tube in the presence of a very strong oxidizing agent like in this case we use nitric acid, fuming nitric acid. And we use sodium peroxide. So we take the organic compound and we put it in the carrier's tube and we heat it up with sodium peroxide or, and, or fuming nitric acid. So it is either sodium peroxide or fuming nitric acid, both of which act as strong oxidizing agents. So a known mass of the organic compound is heated in the carrier's tube with sodium peroxide or fuming nitric acid. When you do that, the oxygen provided by nitric acid or the sodium peroxide, that will be used up by the sulfur present in the organic compound. If the organic compound, of course, had carbon and hydrogen, we know when you have a source of uh, uh, oxygen like uh, nitric acid, the carbon would get oxidized to carbon dioxide. And the water present, twice H, or sorry, the hydrogen present in the compound would get oxidized to water, both of which would be lost. And then the sulfur that is present, it would combine with oxygen and water present in the compound and result in, this would be less into oxygen it's not in the oxygen molecular form it would be oxygen provided by nitric acid so the sulfur would combine to form H2SO4 that is sulfuric acid so what we did we took the sulfur from the organic compound and oxidized it to sulfuric acid but what is our aim? Our aim is to extract, get that compound that is formed with sulfur and separate it from the remaining compound. So that is done by, you. when you get H2SO4 and you already have nitric acid, you have two acids. How do you separate out the sulfur? We need it in a form that allows us to separate it out. So what we do, we convert it into a compound called barium sulfate. Barium sulfate is, um, is a precipitate, it is a solid and since it's a solid now it is possible for us to remove the sulfur from the reaction mixture by filtering it out. So how do we do that? How do we convert the H2SO4 into barium sulfate? We make it react with barium chloride. So H2SO4 would react with barium chloride BaCl2 to result in the formation of barium sulfate and and H twice HCl would be formed. The HCl is again an acid. It would remain in the, it would dissolve in the liquid state and the barium sulfate, which forms a white precipitate, can be filtered out. So you will remove the barium sulfate. You will get the barium sulfate and now you have to, whatever was the compound, whatever was the mass of the compound, whatever sulfur was present in that original organic compound, all of it was given out in the form of sulfur in H2SO4. So it resulted, 
so this H2SO4 has all the sulfur that was present in the compound. Therefore, the barium sulfate that is formed has all the sulfur that is present that was present in the organic compound in the given mass of the compound. From this, if we know the exact mass of sulfur, we can calculate the exact mass of sulfur from the molecular formula or the molecular mass of barium sulfate and by knowing the mass of barium sulfate that was produced. So we use unitary method, we find out the mass of sulfur from there and just as we have been doing in the other elements earlier, the calculations are the same. Once you estimate the mass of sulfur, you will then find out in if m grams of the compound has these many grams of sulfur, then in 100 grams, how much would it be? So again, you would be using unitary method to find that out. So let us see. Barium sulfate, whatever, if m grams, let me first read this out. A known mass of the organic compound is heated in a carrier's tube with sodium peroxide or fuming nitric acid, both of which are going to act as suppliers of oxygen. Sulfur is oxidized to H2SO4 and then it is precipitated as barium sulfate by adding excess of barium chloride in H2O. The precipitate is then filtered. Why do we add excess of barium chloride? Because we do not want to add less barium chloride. So any of the sulfur remains unreacted and you do not get it in the form of a precipitate. We'll add excess of barium chloride. So whatever sulfur is present should form the precipitate. And that is the idea because we want to find out the total mass of all the sulfur that was present in that compound. So you will determine the mass of sulfur, which was, uh, which was obtained from barium sulfate by unitary method. How do we do it? Let us say that the mass of the organic compound that we took was m grams and the mass of barium sulfate formed was m1 grams. The mass, the, uh, the atomic mass of barium is 137, sulfur is 32 and oxygen is 16. So when you find out the mass of 137 plus 32 plus 16 into 4, you will get 233. So two, that is the molar mass of barium sulfate. So one mole of barium sulfate we know has how much of sulfur? So 233 grams of barium sulfate, which is one mole, has how much of sulfur? It has 32 grams. So we know that ratio. From this, we use the unitary method. So we say 233 grams of barium sulfate, 233 grams of barium sulfate, barium sulfate has sulfur 32 grams. Okay, so one gram will have upon 233 and what is the mass of barium sulfate produced? M1. So you say and M1 will have into M1. Now this is the mass of sulfur in whatever M1 grams of barium sulfate. But barium sulfate was formed from the sulfur which was produced from the organic compound. And how much was the organic compound? It was M grams. In other words, this should be the mass of sulfur in m grams of the organic compound also. So we'll say m grams of the organic compound of the organic. So we are using unitary method again to find out the mass percentage. So we'll say m grams of the organic compound contains sulfur, sulfur equal to 32 upon 233 into m1 grams. Right? So, 1 gram will contain how much? Divided by M and 100 will contain how much? 100 grams would contain how much? Into 100. The moment you find out in 100 grams how much, what is the number of grams of sulfur, you have found the mass percentage. So, that is how you would be finding out the mass percentage of sulfur in the compound. I'm not really going into too much of details now because we've been doing the same calculation in the estimation of all the elements till now. It's basically the same. You reach the element, find out how much is present, and then using unitary method, find out its uh, mass percentage. So, in order to clarify this, let us now do this solved example that is given in your textbook. And that should clarify or make it simpler for you. And the next two estimations that we would be doing after sulfur is phosphorus and oxygen. In that we will not even be doing the calculations because you would simply understand how it is done. Okay, so let me now solve this question. The question is question 12.24 and it is a solved example given in your textbook. The question reads, in sulfur estimation, 0 0.157 grams of an organic compound gave these many grams of barium sulfate. So this is M 
and this is M1. Okay, so M is 0 0.157 grams and M1 given is 0 0.4813 grams, okay, of barium sulfate. What is the percentage of sulfur in the compound? So we'll say M1 has the, is these many grams. So from unitary method of the molar mass of barium sulfate, we will calculate that if 233 grams, we know the molar mass of barium sulfate is 233. In case it is not given to you the molar mass, you can, the atomic masses might be given to you and you know the mass of sulfur and oxygen. Barium is 137. It doesn't hurt to memorize it. Although most probably if the mass is not given, these masses will be given to you. So calculate the molar mass, it will come to 233. So you'll say in 233 grams of barium sulfate, sulfur is how much? 32 grams. So in one gram, how much will it be? In one gram, it will be 32 upon 233. And in M1 grams, how much is M1 gram? 0 0.4813 gram. In 0 0.4813 grams, how much would it be? Into 0 0.4813. Now, this is the number of grams of sulfur present in the in this much of barium sulfate. How much? 0 0.4813 grams of barium sulfate. But this is also the amount of sulfur that was produced from M grams, that is 0 0.157 grams of the organic compound. So since the sulfur that is produced is present in uh, barium sulfate is equal to the sulfur that was produced from the organic compound, we will now use unitary method to find the mass percentage. So we'll say that 0 0.157 grams of the compound, of the organic compound, has sulfur 32 upon 233 into 0 0.4813 grams. Okay, grams of sulfur. So one gram of organic compound will have divide by this into 0 0.157 grams. The grams will get cancelled and 100 grams will have into 100. So you'll get the answer in grams, but since it is in those many parts and 100 parts, the answer would be in percentage. So when you multiply it by 100, what do you get? When you calculate this, you will get... Uh, 42.1%. It is 42.1% is the answer that you would get. So 42.1% of the organic compound is sulfur or the mass percentage of sulfur in the organic compound is 42.1%. All right. So this was how you estimate the presence of the amount of carbon quantitatively uh, sulfur in the organic compound. And with this, I'll wind up today's video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. I apologize for the dog barking of the dogs, but they are with me, so uh, I can't avoid it. But I hope you found it useful. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.